بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Hello and welcome to Footy Judge More People What a day of good football and absolutely atrocious football from Manchester United I don't know what we have watched to be honest what we just watched Manchester United actually wanted to win the game Wallahi shame on Manchester United for the celebration for the Mason Mount goal Shame on Manchester United and Chelsea listen Don't tell, like, Poch out, not Poch out, Enzo out, Caicedo out. Ten men, the worst team in the league. The worst team in the league. Ten men for about 70 minutes. You are up twice and you bottle the lead at your home ground. Right? And some Chelsea fans, I, I, I think they just, just fold the club, to be honest. Spurs, they scrape a win, three points. But I think now they're going to they're gonna make top four, top five, whatever. They scrape a win. I don't think the performance was good, but I'm here, of course, with Hussam. This is football. This is going to be absolutely a brilliant show. So if you're here now, you know what to do. You like the video now, if we are li if you are live with us, and if you're watching this on the replay, you do one thing only. You like it now. It looks like thumbs up underneath the video, just in case you're living under the rock for the last 10 years when YouTube was invented. You like the video because it helps the channel massively. We'll talk about all the games and also we'll touch on tomorrow. We'll touch, oh, watch Hussam doing it. Like the video right there. We'll touch on the games tomorrow. Who must win? Who do we think will come on top tomorrow? Because I can't wait. I woke up today and I wish it was Sunday to watch the other games, to be honest. Because some of the games <laughs> today were not great. But listen, I'm going to let Hussam now talk. So guys, 230 people. And we haven't even started yet. You like the video, right? Your super chats, all of them will get responded to, each and every single one of them in the middle. Like, we'll do sections, of course. And listen, bro, 20 years old, YouTube. So if 20 years old, you have been living under the rock and you don't know where the like button is, it's even worse. But listen, I'm not, I'm not talking. It's even worse. <laughs> it, is, it is, it is worse, man. Big up to all of you guys in the chat. You guys already know, run the likes up, you get me, subscribe. I'll be honest with you, when me and Mo were speaking about Saturday, it looked way worse than than what actually turned out today. Like, you know, Chelsea got a draw at home to Burnley. You know, Gary Neville was right. The blue the, the blue billion pound bottle jobs. He said that they were all triggered, but he was right. You know, Spurs literally scraping past Luton. And then Man United get the most undeserved points of the whole year. They shouldn't have even got a point in that game. So we're going to discuss this all today. You get me. Uh, just me and Mo. Make sure guys are liking, make sure guys are subscribing. And there is a lot, there's a lot for us to unpack from the action today. And as he said, tomorrow you're going to get some real football as well. You know, I bet you the Liverpool Brighton game alone will be more entertaining than the entirety of this day. But we're here to discuss this day because even though it wasn't that entertaining, there still is a lot to unpack. You best believe it. So, yeah, um, get ready, Habibis. Like and subscribe. <laughs> Based on the data, we should be fourth. Yes, we'll analyze the data. As Matisse did an emergency stream about the data. Uh, we'll analyze the data. We'll absolutely analyze the data. They should be fourth. Absolutely. Listen, I actually think I disagree with Hussam a little bit. I actually think the day was entertaining, actually. It was actually entertaining. Only team that absolutely were atrocious today is Manchester United. What is this? And I think we should start there. 300 people here. And listen, I, I want to get your opinions, people, in the chat, because I, I, I tweeted something at half time, and I, I want to get Hussam's opinion. I'm going to say a statement, Hussam, and I want to get your opinion, to be honest. Yes. I said Man United today look like a mediocre, average, mid-table team that goes to Brentford, that is playing a team that is struggling in the relegation battle, that is struggling to get points, and they look like a team... That is holding on to the game. They look like a very mediocre football club. It's not only about the team. They looked like a mediocre football club. Because the manager on the touchline was silent. As it's all right to concede all these chances against Brentford. And it's all right that his players are terrible. And before I let you go on. At halftime here on NBC. To be honest, I think there was, I can't remember who the guys that were on the halftime on NBC, but they, they're really good. And they said, maybe Man United fans should just accept that Ten Hag wants to coach them as a mid-table team. 
as a transition-based football team. Like, they are not going to see the Ajax football. Maybe they just should accept that as this is it. This is what they're going to see if they stick to this guy. I'll be honest with you. Plan A, plan B, plan C, plan nothing for Man United today. It's just, just absolutely embarrassing. The most disgraceful performance. Brentford had 31 shots. I want that to just sink into the minds of everyone watching this now or on the replay. Brentford had 31 shots. Not five shots, 10 shots, 15 shots, 31 shots in a 90-minute game. So basically, there was a shot every three minutes, essentially, in a 90-minute game. That is how insane that is. And I'll be honest with you, Man United didn't even deserve a point. Manchester United did not even deserve a point in this game. They didn't. Brentford should have scored about six goals. Ivan Tony, Wisa, all the forwards, even Mwemo when he came on. Every single one of them had chances. Mopai. And it actually took Ayer, who was a centre-back, to score a goal. Like, show them, like, okay, this is how you actually score a goal. There was a moment in that second half when I think they played one of the guys in behind. Uh, he shot it straight at Onana. And then he got the rebound and he shot it straight at Onana again. Like, you, you cannot make this up. Brentford had such a lack of clinicalness. It's embarrassing. I think they had like almost 90 touches in Man United's box. And just in, in typical, typical poor Man United fashion, you know, because they're very jammy. I've never seen this. Is This reminded me of the City Bournemouth game where City didn't deserve to get the three points. Today, Man United didn't even deserve to get the point. Mason Mount scores. He goes off celebrating like they won the Premier League, running into the crowd. And Man United fans, I want to say, what a disgrace. What a disgrace, Man United fans, jumping up and down, celebrating. You've been you've been dominated for the last 90 minutes. Man United, Man United used to win league titles. Man United used to win Champions League. Man United used to win FA Cup. Man United won games like this in their sleep. And now they just run up and down the pitch absolutely pointlessly. And I'll be honest with you, I don't think any Man United fan can be proud of that performance today or proud of any of the players. Lissandro Martinez comes on and Man United look even worse with Lissandro Martinez. No, you can't blame he's... him. He's injured, bro. He hasn't played forever. I don't care. I don't care. He's, he's a Premier League footballer. He's yeah, back. He's he hasn't played forever. He should perform. I don't think he should have played today. Can you I stop mean, giving let's excuses? be honest with ourselves. He Why should not have excuses? played. I'm not, I'm... No, 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 Hussam. Listen, I'm not, I'm not like the biggest fan of Manchester United, but come on, Hussam. Let's be honest. Bro, did he? Did they not the look worse when he was fourth, on the pitch? The guy was as filler on the bench. He wasn't supposed to play. Did they when not look wanted... worse when he was on the pitch? Yes or no? Yes, he did. Yes, or no? this, yes they did. Well, I'm gonna ask you footy judge most style questions. Yes or no? Yeah. Did they not look yes. worse? See, did I'm he not make forward. individual errors that has nothing to do with an yes, injury? Yes, he did. Khalas, thank you very much for proving my point. Then I don't care if he shouldn't be there. We shouldn't be there. I don't care. The guy passed it to Brentford players about three, four times. And that's supposed to be the butcher. That's a vegan butcher, more like. Butch Cutting potatoes. That's the only butcher <laughs> butchering he was doing. He cannot cut any meat. You get me? So, Man United were dreadful. And you know, I have to say, especially a shout out to Chelsea fans watching us. Because this was an extra bad day for you. Because Mason Mount scored as well. Spurs won. I'll be honest with you. Chelsea fans are crying in the corner. I know we, we don't want to get to Chelsea yet. But this Man United performance, I'll be honest with you. The reason why I blame the manager. Yeah, the reason you. why I blame the manager for Man United is because they actually have seasoned, experienced professionals who should be doing a lot better that aren't doing better. And also, all the players at Man United are actually Ten Hag's choice. He chose them. He chose all of these players. And the players that are actually saving him are the players that aren't his choice. The players that he did not sign, like the McTominays of the world. But I'll be honest with you, Man United are hopeless. Well, let's address hopeless. some of the problems. And I'm going to say, you guys, Man United fans, and, and, and there were some people today fucking on, 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 YouTube, like on YouTube and on Twitter, and they were talking about, oh, Chelsea aren't better than Man United. Have you watched Man United lately? Have you watched Man United lately? Have you watched McTominay 90 minutes uh, performance on the pit? Have you watched Bruno Fernandes? Have you watched Marcus Rashford today? And I'm going to go back to my take Last, not this last summer, the summer before when I said Harvey Barnes of Leicester over Marcus oh, Rashford. God. And Harvey Barnes today wins the game for Newcastle while Marcus Rashford drops a stinker. Listen, I think I'm you're not being gonna, very I'm not gonna be, I'm not gonna be that Rashford. shameless. Being very disrespectful. However, you're so shameless, Mo. So shameless. Uh, I am, but Marcus Rashford today, the guy. 
I don't think the guy's interested, but it's not only that. How is McTominay play 90 minutes? Why didn't Ericsson come on? Like, why didn't, like, and, and Garnacho, of course, absolutely atrocious. But how are you looking at Rashford, though? Why Why Rashford specifically? Why? Uh, they didn't create him any chance. Very important. That's a very important question I'm going to answer you. Very important question, my friend. Always look at the superstars that get paid a lot of money that the spotlight on them to take you out of the trenches. Don't look. Rashford is not a superstar. Uh huh. He if isn't. we I agree, if, tab, tab, okay, if we agree, me and you, that Rashford isn't a superstar for Manchester United, this yeah. conversation we move on. Man United have no superstars. <laughs> Who's the superstar? They went from Cristiano Ronaldo. I'll, 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 I'll tell you. I'll tell you why. You look. You look at. When Spurs fail. You look at Son. If Liverpool fail, you look at Salah. I'm not comparing Marcus Sashford to them. But at some point last season. He was talked about as, oh my God, look at Marcus Rashford in the Premier League. Look at him scoring left and right. Now he drops a stinker after a stinker. We're giving him a leeway. We're giving him excuses. Yeah, but that's because Man United fans are delusional. I'm not going to hold them okay. accountable for what Man United fans okay. say. I don't care what who they compare them to. The reality is Marcus Rashford is just a good Premier League player. Today, okay. no chance was created for Rashford. We cannot scapegoat Rashford. You cannot do like these bottom reds who just keep, keep scapegoating all the non-technical players. Let's let's not do that. Because today it wasn't Rashford's fault. It wasn't Mason Mount's fault. It was it was Ten Hag's fault because there was no midfield. You know that you know. I agree. Yeah. Do you like donuts more? Do you like donuts? Yeah, a little bit. Not much. Really. You know, you know when they make donuts, there's a hole in the middle. That's yeah. the Man United midfield today. Yeah, but there was Kobe Meno. Kobe Meno. I told people, hold your horses on Kobe Mano. You see why today? Overrun in midfield once again. I'm not going to blame the kid, but that's you why I tell people, kid, calm He's down. not a defensive guy. McCombie yes, but I was, that's why I'm you not were blame, playing 10 men, down. bro. Okay. Are Man United fans, using your logic, that wanted to hold them accountable for Rashford, are Man United fans doing too much with Kobe Mano? Yes or no? Be honest. A little bit, yes. But he's yeah, very they're... talented, to be honest. A little he's bit? A My little star bit. boy. You know what they were calling him on the football terrace? A freak of nature. No, that's Kobe Mello. I said he's a very talented kid. He has a bright yes. future. He looks very talented. He looks like Marcus Rashford when he came on. A little bit more polished than Marcus Rashford. Like, listen, he looked like a young player that has a lot of... A, a lot Is he a freak of nature? nature? Is he a generational talent? I can't tell from now. He's 18 years old. He looks like way yeah, ahead of his from now, no, is the answer. Well, he's, he's ahead of the curve, bro. Can I ask you something? Is he already better than Enzo Fernandez, for example? There you are. There you are. Mentioning Enzo Fernandez. Here we go, chat. Here we go. He played Chelsea today. Yeah. He played today. He played today, Enzo. Can I say, though? He played today. Put yourself full screen. Put yourself full screen. Say that again. Put, that. Put yourself full screen. Put yourself full screen right now. Tell the people. Tell the world. Tell them. I dare Mano. you make this statement. Well, Kobe Mano looks better than Enzo Fernandez. I said it. It's right there. Kobe Mano, and I'm not Don't just saying it indirectly. Him. Say he's a better player right now. Well, Kobe Clip. Mano at the current moment is a better player than Enzo Fernandez. Do you think I'm a, I'm scared? Do you think I'm scared? Oh, he is God. on the ball today. And okay, let me explain because you are trying to catch me out, right? Kobe Mano today on the ball, on the ball, looked better than the end of He looked more composed than anyone on the pitch. Yes, defensively. I I'll tell you what. In both aspects of the game, on the ball, Kobe Mano looks better than Enzo Fernandez already for me. Defensively, Kobe Mano has more attributes than Enzo Fernandez. I said it, and here it is. I said it. Okay, before I re reply to you, you yeah, get reply. me. I want to say this. I'm a Liverpool fan. I would take Enzo in my team. I'm not taking Mainu in my team. Enzo starts for Liverpool. Mainu doesn't. Tell you why Enzo starts for Liverpool. Because under a good manager who actually knows how to use him, he would be an incredible ball carrier for a, for a football team. He would play a great role of just playing the ball from defense to attack. That's Enzo's role. That's what he done for Argentina. The problem is you keep looking at Enzo Fernandez and thinking he's going to be the next Lampard. And he is going to run through the players and he's going to shoot from far and he's going to get GA and do all that stuff. But that's not Enzo's role, though. That's not who Enzo is as a player. 
Enzo is a ball carrier. He's a water carrier. He's a player who is very pressure resistant. He keeps the ball well. He passes the ball well. He passes the ball forward. His role should be taking the ball from the defense and giving it to the attack. We're always looking at him and trying to rate him with stuff that he does not do. Enzo is a good player. But the problem with the Chelsea midfield is they have no balance. And it's the same thing with Man United. I'm not blaming Kobe Mainu, but Man United's midfield has no balance. Any midfield with McTominay and Bruno in the same midfield has no balance whatsoever. I think Bruno is the most overrated player in world football. I think this guy's the most overrated Premier League midfielder of all time. I think the fact that Manchester United fans were comparing Bruno Fernandes to Steven Gerrard and to Lampard and to greats of the game is even worse than anything we can say about Mainu or Enzo. And I think Eric Ten Hag needs to look, look at himself in the mirror and blame himself because that team had no balance. How can you put three players together, one kid, expect them to do all the defensive work, and then have McTominay and Bruno, who both play, even though they aren't, they play like tens, where they just want to, you know, McTominay, what does McTominay do? Late Nothing. runs into the box. Nothing. Late no, he does late runs. Into the, late runs into the box when they are playing crosses. That's <laughs> he does nothing. He saved Eric Ten Hag's job about five different times. Yeah. But McTominay is a better player than Gallagher, if you want to compare United and Chelsea. McTominay would have saved Chelsea today. The chances that Gallagher missed. I'm being honest, bro. I'm being honest. Why are you hating on McTominay when he's... Has he factually not saved Man United this season? Guys in the chat... Chat, am I crazy? Has he not saved Man United? 500 people here. And this guy is telling me... This guy is telling me... That Scott McTominay is a better player than Conor Gallagher. 500 of you, I need answers. Who is better, Conor Gallagher or McTominay? Scott McTominay. What is this guy? What have you been smoking? Have you had Okay. So yes, let's let's or, Gallagher, or Gallagher let's does let's his let's run, bro. Let's, esta let's establish something. It can be a conversation. But I believe Kona Galaga is a much super, like not much superior. It's a superior okay, chat, player on the board. Chat. Let's debunk this guy on his own channel. Chat right now. One name answer and one name answer only. No life stories. Don't write me your life story. I don't care. One name, McTominay or Gallagher, right now on the chat. Okay, let's because do it. Scott McTominay this season. Let me give you my logic. There's more yeah. McTominays. Don't lie, Mo. I tell you why. I'll lie. There is more Gallagher. Wallah. Why, why, you there is more Gallagh. why you say Wallah? It's Ramadan. Aha. Aha. Gallagher. Gallagher. Yeah, the McTominay Gallagher. scored Gallagher. clutch goals Gallagher. against Aston Villa. Gallagher. He scored Gallagher. clutch goals against Brentford. He scored Gallagher. clutch goals this season. McTominay actually has a use. What's his use? Let me tell you. His use is high work rate, and he runs into the box no, and finishes chances. So he is just a late no, box runner. Doesn't. Gallagher no, is doesn't. literally just a tactical player who runs around. No. That is all. He's good for man marking. He's good for running around. Conor Gallagher is an actually bad player. But that's not the point, Mo. Let's go back. Let's go okay, back. I'll, let's not do it on Conor Gallagher. Can I take it a step back? No, 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 yeah. no. Because I want, I want to make sure you get to my point. I want to take it a step back. Yeah. Kobe Maino is not to blame for where Man United No, are. no, no. You, but you, Man United you. fans have overrated the crap out of Kobe Maino. And that midfield is so unbalanced. That's why they keep conceding chances. Because the midfield is very unbalanced. It is. I have no idea. So I, I want I want to actually speak about this. How the heck did this guy Eric Ten Hag sit in a dressing room with his assistant before the game and said, "You know what? I think this is the right lineup. I actually think we play Lindelof and Varane. We play McTominay, Kobe Mano, and Bruno in the middle. I actually think against Brentford, right? I think this is what's going to give us control. Brentford. He could have went to the game." This is, Wallahi, this is honest truth. And I'm not claiming to be the best coach or a coach or whatever. Wallahi, it's honest truth. Brentford, if he had Casemiro or even Christian Eriksson, Brentford would have sat back. Or even and, Mason Mount. And, and, and Man United would have had more control of the game. If he had better midfield and he has on the bench players that play, if he benched McTominay today, and played anyone else, he would have had more control and he would have had more position than this. But he chose not to, as he wants to sabotage the game for himself. Like he doesn't want to have control. And also, what I don't understand from him in the second half, 
10 minutes goes in. 15 minutes and Brentford have the position and they're pressing you. Why didn't you make a sub in minute 55 to put another midfielder in to control the game? Why not? Why do you choose to be stubborn? What, 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 what do you mean? And then that scores a goal? Yes, you score a freaking goal at the end. You could have been six nil down, bro. They hit the post like four times, right? My problem with Eric Ten Hag and what my problem with some coaches is that they freaking sit on the touchline and I oh, see buddy. it with my eyes, right? I see it. He's watching the game like me, but I'm on the TV. I can't affect the game. I cannot go to the fourth official and make a sub. I just can't. I can't go to the fourth. I can't tell Casemiro, get off. Let's make a sub. Do you know when Casemiro got in, they had a little bit of more control. A little bit. Yes. Yes. Bro, people don't like to hear this. Mo, you used to play football. What are Brentford going to do? Everyone knows this. What, what are they going to do? They're going to play long balls on the sides. They're going to cross. It's so, it's so. If I bring, if I bring someone who has started watching the Premier League only this season, he will describe exactly what Brentford do. Brentford play long balls to their two strikers and they overlap on the wings and then the winger will try cross it again and one of the two strikers score. Guys, I know you guys in the chat, a lot of you guys are obsessed with technical ability and they love people who have technique okay. and the people who can pass left and pass right, you know, like Kobe Maino and stuff. But sometimes, whether you like it or not, in the Premier League, you need pace and power or you need control. Give you a prime example. The Liverpool midfield against Brentford was Curtis Jones, Wataru Endo, Alexis McAllister. No penetration, no attacking presence, nothing. But three, strong, powerful, quick. You know, not, not quick like Mo Salah quick, but quick midfielders who can get the ball and start an attack directly. None of the Man United midfielders could do that. You need strong players against certain teams. Guys, let me give you a news flash to everyone in the chat. I've been watching the Premier League football for 20 years. Whether you like it or not, you need pace and power in the Premier League. Bruno, no pace, no power. McTominay, no pace, no power. Actually, a bit of power, I'll say. Kobe Maino, I don't think he's um, Can I, I stop you here and tell you something? The problem, before you go on, McTominay, the problem is he doesn't use his power. You know, McTominay doesn't tackle. He contains. He contains like the... Uh, like the Kobe Mainos and the Brunos. You know you know the difference between someone who contains and someone to go... Like Conor Gallagher go to get the ball. Enzo Fernandez contain. McTominay, he's as big as this and doesn't want to tackle. He wants to contain. He wants to... If people yes. from Arab world know. It's like, I'm containing. I'm not... I'm like, Basically, though, not get dribbled past or anything. Just yeah, he's like, all it. he was worried about is not to get the ball. Is to stop in front of someone, bro. You play for Manchester United, bro. You need to get the ball, bro. Like, Can we talk about ridiculous. Brentford having 31 shots? Can we actually? Yeah, yeah. Because this is not normal. This is actually not I remember normal. Remember, Liverpool had 31 shots once or twice this season. Who has the most? Yes, shots? I think we had it against uh, Everton at home, and there was another once. game. And Man City had 38 shots once this season, guys. Like, well, 31 why, shots is not a small number, chat. Please, uh, can, if someone can get us the, the statistic in the chat of actually like how many times has the team had like 30 plus shots yeah, this ridiculous. season, they hit the post. I know what's sad about football. Let me tell you one thing about football stats that's sad. The four times that they hit the post, it's considered shot off target, not on target. And because it's considered shot off target, you get me? <laughs> because it's considered shot off target, not on target. This is what happens. Um, it, 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 it's, just, it's just sad. I'll be honest with you. It's actually so sad. They had eight. They had almost ninety touches in the box and thirty-one shots. If I told you pre-game, how can shots, someone have ninety touches in the box in ninety minutes? Like, how can this happen? A touch in the box per minute, basically. You know how mad that is. Like eighty touches in the box, as Martin says. I I've never seen this. I have never. This is a sackable offense by itself. I think. I think. I. I genuinely think he needs to. 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 Uh, no, he needs to be sad. He needs to get no, he needs to be sacked. He, he needs to get sacked. I Eric don't Ten Hag think, and by the way, he needs to get sacked tomorrow. You know, you know why they need to get sacked? Because yeah. Spurs are crap. You know why? Yeah. Man United, whether you like it or not, can still get top four. It's a sad yeah, It's eight points it's now. Clear. It's eight points. I don't think they, they can. can still get it. You think so? Yes, I, because Aston Villa will not survive, bro. in my opinion. Aston Villa, not Man United. Not, 
Yeah, so but by the way, both of them are no, bro. It's 11 area. points ahead of them, bro. 11 points, and also, uh, how are you sitting here and telling me that Man United can get top four with these performances? How actually, no, now I take that back. I don't even think they can get top four anymore. Let's let, let me just let's just uh, how, how far are they exactly in the Premier League? Sorry, I don't look that far down the I, table. I can Maybe. actually let, let me let me show the table for you. Let me yes, show, show it. Let me get foot more. Let me show the table. Goal difference as well is a problem. I just remember their goal difference is zero. Let's show the people the table. It's oh, very Allah. simple. Them, Man, yeah. but, Man, like, like, to be honest, but Man United, the problem is this is a, the problem is there are people that still believe that this manager can turn it around. Like, I just, how? The, the, how? Like, how? Like, tomorrow. Tomorrow. Like, how? How? How can you sit here and convince me that this is tactically he's inferior to a lot of people? Big up Joe from Just a Joe Football Show. I did a show with him early in the season and he told me Thomas Frank is better than Ten Hag. And we laughed at him. Wallahi, we laughed at him. We I don't rate uh, Thomas Frank, but I think he is better than Ten Hag. Because uh, Ten Hag would have Brentford relegated by now. They'd be 20th. That's the reality. And Thomas Frank would probably have Man United higher up on the table. Either he yeah, would. of course. Are you going to share the table? Because I'm yes. actually interested in the numbers. Share, share the table. There you go. Show the audience. By the way, guys, there's 550 people in here. We just hit 200 likes. Let's meet at halfway line. 250 likes minimum. Slap the like button now and subscribe to Footy Judge Mo right now. Hit the like button and subscribe right here, right now, guys. Get me today. It's a special just Mo and Hussam. You get me here analyzing the beautiful game. So let's let's look at the okay. So let's just let's look at this. Aston Villa are fourth. Aston Villa 59 have 59 points. points. Bro, Aston Villa are in title race. They're four points behind Manchester City. Oh, uh, there you are. There you are. Always exaggerating. <laughs> Aston no, no. Villa are in a title they have, race. They have, no, two, they have two games in hand, bro. They have two games. No, they're ahead. not. No, they have they have two games. Uh, they have two games ahead, on Man City yeah, yeah. ahead. Uh, they are 11 points in front of Man United. And uh, but Man United have a game in hand. Aston Villa play the, the top three teams. Manchester United play Arsenal and Liverpool, right? I don't think Man United are in a top Spurs four. Spurs play City. Guys, I want to say one thing. and Liverpool as well. This, this zero goal difference by itself is a disgrace. Wallahi. This zero goal difference is a disgrace. Guys, Man United, I'm going to show you something that you won't believe. Man United only scored 40 goals. Let's go down the table to see who scored less than Manchester United. Watch, watch. Watch this, people. Watch this. We're going down the table. Watch oh this. God. Crystal Palace, the first team. Crystal Palace. Everton. Nottingham Forest. They have less Burnley goals than and Luton. Sheffield United. They have less goals than Luton. Man Eric Ten Hag is coaching Luton. a team that have less goals than Luton, Luton than Brentford, Town. than Bournemouth, than Fulham, than Chelsea, than Wolves, right? Than West Ham. West Ham under David Moyes have scored nine more goals than Manchester United. West Ham. I would like to apologize to the viewers of Footy Judge Mo for suggesting Man United could get top four. They can't. You get me? Europa League it is, guys. I'm so sorry. I can't. I cannot. Listen, I take it back. I apologize. My bad, chat. My bad. I'm so sorry. They ain't getting no, no top four. Top four is not happening. You get this me? Is like, this is wild. This is Trevor. You're, this is wild, bro. It's wild. 40 goals. 29 games in, 40 goals, people. Like, what is... And the this? thing is, as well, when you look at it on paper, if we're saying on paper only, forget execution, on paper, Man United probably have more goal-scoring forwards than a lot of those teams. Garnacho is probably a good goal-scorer. Rashford is a good goal-scorer. Hoyland is a good goal-scorer. On paper, they have three players who can at least score goals. But I just don't think that the system has them in that position. I don't even think the attack gets the ball enough to, to impact or affect the game. I'll be honest with you. They just don't. And the reality is Man United right now, they need to sack their manager because they are headed nowhere. And they're headed nowhere fast. And this will only change if they get rid of Ten Hag. I'll be honest with you. I actually, believe, the a new call in midfield, the I actually believe a new manager can save the season. Yo, but how, but how, how, how much though? How much save? I don't know. They can battle at least for top four if Aston Villa lose games. You just made me take it back, and now you're saying yeah, it yourself. Yeah, 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 yeah. With Ten Hag, I think it's impossible. I don't know what a new manager. I agree do. with you. With Ten Hag, like with Ten Hag, I think it's impossible. I actually, actually believe you know why with a new manager it's impossible because why? who are they going to get as manager? I don't know. 
I even mean, no, 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 because the people that they've been linked with Southgate, Potter, no, these Manchester, are not. Like these are, they can't. They can't. Yeah, they can't get top four. I think if they get Graham Potter in, they won't get top four. And I think if they get Southgate, they won't get top four. Maybe if they get Ancelotti, they won't. Or Zidane, they won't. And they'll get top four. Other than that, then they won't. Man United are crap, guys. Man United are crap. You get me? We got bamboozled. Actually, I didn't get bamboozled because I was calling them crap last season, you know. But, bro, it was literally Rashford's goals dried up. And all of a sudden, Man United look absolutely dreadful. And I'll be honest with you. If we're just saying it as it has been completely honest, they did not even deserve a point today. No. They should have lost by five or six goals. The fact that Brentford hit the fo- post four four times is just honestly as well. Some of the Brentford forwards today pissed me off. Tony pissed me off. But Boy, they were unlucky. But Tony missed the one on one. I we saw pissed me off. But it looked good to be honest. But to be honest, I, I don't know. Like to be Man United to go from here, and then they tell me that because next season they're under a good structure, that it's gonna get better. Get out of here, people. Get out of here, bro. We don't know what Ratcliffe will do still. Let's get that. Unless in. he goes and spend half a million half a billion. Bro, they can't spend half a billion. They are have a problem, bro. They have a problem. They can't spend half a billion. FFP exists. Yeah. They can't spend half a billion. So so you're gonna end up next season with the butcher again with one Bissaka, uh, with Casimiro, with Bruno Fernandez, Marcus Rashford, Anthony Garnacho, uh, Rasmus Hoyland. This and a lot of them are on high wages. And you can see Jaden Sancho, FYI, by the way, for the people who don't know. Let me just tell the people something. Uh, the result of today's game uh, was Borussia Dortmund 2, you get me, Bayern Munich 0. The club that Jaden Sancho joined, you get me, is currently playing better than Man United. Jaden Sancho and Borussia Dortmund have beaten Bayern. Man United were in the same group as them and they couldn't beat them this season. Just saying, just putting it out there. Just saying, they couldn't. They couldn't. Jaden Sancho had a rating of 7.5 people <laughs> today. Uh, so they could have used Jaden Sancho today. They could Listen, have. listen they people, let's do the super chats. But listen, about 560 of you here, let's get to 300 likes. You know what? I said it before. In every stream, let's get to 300 likes live or 400 likes. I, I believe we can get to 400 likes live. And then after, we can get to 500 likes or 600 likes. That will help the channel massively. Now, let's do the summer of the Super Chats to see what you guys are saying. Appreciate everybody supporting. Get your Super Chats in. We'll respond to them. Big up, frauds. Hossam, I can't lie. You need to take notes off Tom on back again. He was speaking facts. We will win this league up the fucking Reds. Ray Ray, I've seen the comments of you stabbing me in the back saying Connor Bradley is better than Trent, you know, when they refer to me as Trent. Hey, don't worry about that, brother Ray Ray. You know, you only know the, the, the worth of something when it's missing. Then you will come back and cry when Tom Little's making all these fraudulent takes. But yeah, let's not forget that Tom Little wanted Thomas Tuchel to manage Liverpool. He wanted to clop out. He d- done Andy Robertson prop. I can name you Thomas Tom Little howlers from here till tomorrow. I will literally send him to court. And you're Mr. 1610. So let's not go there before I send Mo the clip and he plays it on the stream. Yeah. Skip to Malou saying, based on the data, we should be fourth. We'll talk about that. Oh my God, Chelsea. You know, this is a correct statement. If you don't like it, I I think this is a correct statement. I'll explain it in a second. Uh, We'll see how it goes. Uh, I Rocks is saying, Chelsea look like prime Barcelona and Mudrik like a Ballon d'Or winner compared to this Man United and Garnacho and Rashford. Let's see what happens Thursday. Yeah, yeah. I... This is true, by the way, Irox. By the way, today, Chelsea were the Brentford in, in the Chelsea game, which we'll get to now in a second. In the Chelsea game, Chelsea were the Brentford. They were the ones that had hella chances and just missed them all, as per usual. I've told people from the start of the season, you have let Chelsea fans lie to you time after time after time after time. And I'll tell you why now in a second, but you know what it is? This Thursday, I'm expecting Man United to actually get something against Chelsea. I really am. Because I just think Man United are just extremely lucky this season. I just don't know why. And uh, by the way, uh, Man United are uh, also Chelsea's bogey team. Chelsea have not beaten Man United, I think, in five or six years. Just saying. Just saying. Just Just saying. saying. Um, Nilot Pal, big up Nilot Pal, thank you for the support. Big up Mo and Osam, amazing content from both of you, absolutely, Jim. Allah, Nilot Pal, thank you so much. We we appreciate everybody that's supporting both our channels. This is football, of course, and Footy Judge Mo. We're trying to give you content, we'll try to collaborate, we'll try to see what happens. Of course, you have tomorrow, Lahwa. 
this is uh, this is gonna be fine. I have a I have a match reaction, and then we have Al-Ahwa, of course, at 10. 10 p.m. UK time, right? 10 p.m. Uh under right United Europa League, I will be there. Yeah, they will make they will get Europa League. Of course, United will get Europa League. Unless something dramatic happens, absolutely. Smoke is saying, Mo, I have been crazy for saying Tiago Mota is the best manager option for Liverpool. Do you agree? I watched some of Bologna. He's very good. However, I want to say this, people. For the people that think our young and upcoming manager will come into the league and just bang right away, I think it's a risk. And it might be uncalculated yeah. risk. It might be an uncalculated risk. This is not the era of you getting a young manager and trying. This is not... Uh, it might not work and it might backfire completely. Yes, he looks good in Bologna. Pressure in the Premier League is different. Pressure at Liverpool is different. Pressure at the Champions League is different. I I'm not sure about that. Like, I would think... The step is up is too big, man. It's the too step big up is for too now. Big. He needs to go... You don't to, go from Bologna to... He needs to go to Lazio. He needs to go Roma. He might need to go... Yes, Like agree. Milan. He might need to go... Like, I'm not saying that Milan is a small club, but he needs to go probably Milan in the same league first, right? Maybe do something with them. And then go uh, to Liverpool. It's not yeah, like Mota, Milan, if Mota manages Dortmund and does yes. well with Dortmund, I get it. But not from Bologna, bro. Bologna from... too small of a budget, too small too of a fan small. base. Everything small is a... different. Like, like it's completely. I, I, I'll different, give you a quick bro. example, just on the Mota thing. If, mm -hmm. if Mota is managing at at uh, Bologna, he has no egos to deal with. If he walks into Liverpool Football Club, Virgil Van Dijk has an ego, Allison has an ego, Salah has an ego, Trent has an ego. Just doesn't work, man. Just doesn't work. You need yeah. to have allow people to make the correct step ups in their career. You cannot jump from Bologna, Genoa level clubs to like you know to just all of a sudden. People think games. everybody's gonna be Mourinho, guys. Mourinho won the Champions League before he came to Chelsea. If Mota <laughs> wins the Champions League with Bologna, yes, yes. I'll take him. <laughs> I'll take him. <laughs> like people think, take... and people think everybody's gonna be Ange Postecoglou. Now, nah, come on, people, you gotta be a little bit more serious. Ange about... Postecoglou is overrated. I called it from match day one when you were all doing Spurs prop. He's now you see it in your own eyes. He's not overrated. He's very overrated. Very He's not overrated. overrated. He's overrated. He's just an attacking He's very football good. manager. You can see He's that. He's an attacking day. football manager. Yes. Yeah, oh my God, he won the league with Celtic. No problem, I can win the league with But he's Celtic. a very attacking football manager, so what's your problem with that? There you are. You think I limit I limit the success to just who has attacking football? Do you think I sit here and I just go, oh my God, they play attacking football and that's it? Spurs scraped past Luton, brother. I don't rate Ainge. I don't think Ainge is anything special. I think Pochettino is a better manager than Ainge. And he done better with the Spurs as well. Yeah, we cannot. I cannot judge Ange time at Spurs after half a season. And and Ange Postecoglou has better players than Pochettino did. Yeah. Absolutely Let's not. not go there. 100, 100%, yes, he does. No. Yes, yes, he does. One hundred percent. Son at Man, the end of his career, he has the results. No. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Kolesevsky was crap. Brennan Johnson is not good. And we're not talking about Spurs yet, but. I'm just counting. Timo Werner, absolute ab abysmal football player. Timo Werner. Pepe Metasar isn't close to Osman Dembele. Osman Dembele! Right? Dembele Osman was a baller. Osman Dembele! Romero! Yes, I'm saying he's a baller. I'm saying Dembele is a baller. Yes, no okay. problem. Osman Dembele is... Exactly. Listen, Ainge has very good players and he has a very good no, but system. It's not. Like Pedro, the oh, players in that team, Van de Ven, Romero, Udogi, when we do players, when we yeah, do team of the season, when we do team of the season and you invite Jacob on, he votes for about seven not different Osman. players. Musa, Musa Dembele. Yeah, Musa Dembele. Yeah. Sorry, Musa, yeah, Musa, not Musa. Osman. <laughs> That's the Barcelona way. That's the new guy. Point, then. point, Jeez, point. Listen, there's many Dembele's in world football. Big up to all of them. Now, back to the Spurs. Spurs have very good players when you do team when you do team of the season or when you speak to spurs fans they vote for about eight players in team of the season let's vo vote son vote madison vote besuma vote uh, udogi vote pedro poro vote vicario vote van de van vote romero don't act like they have a dead team respectfully let's not do that now okay we'll talk about chelsea or we're gonna talk about spurs Hey, we can we can dunk on Spurs for five minutes if you want. They're not that relevant, you know. They're a bit irrelevant. We can we can start with the irrelevant club and then go to the relevant club because Chelsea will always be bigger than Spurs because even in Chelsea's biggest dark era, they still win trophies, you know. Mauricio Sarri was a manager. All the Chelsea fans wanted out. He won the Europa League. Rafael Benitez was a manager. All the Chelsea fans wanted out. He won the Europa League. The reality is Chelsea will forever be a bigger club than Tottenham Hotspur because Tottenham Hotspur are just irrelevant. And that's the truth. And the reason why they're irrelevant 
management is not Ange Postecoglou, it's not Mauricio Pochino, it's not any of their managers, it's Daniel Levy. And until Spurs fans get together and get Daniel Levy out, they will forever be in Arsenal and Chelsea's shadow forever. The fact that they were saying, the fact that they were telling Arsenal fans there is a power shift in North London with zero trophies is a cra- It's the audacity is abnormal for me. But yeah. I'm going to, I said something about Spurs before and people got mad. And I know it's no disrespect to Spurs. I'll tell you You're about to be disrespectful as soon as you say no disrespectful. I'm about, I'm about to You're be about very to be dis- so disrespectful. So disrespectful. You're not going to believe it, people. You're not going to believe it. Right? Uh, when Chelsea, when che- I'm not talking about like, it's, it's not about trophies or all of this. When Chelsea were on the top, when they got the money, and where they, um, when they actually were on the top, Chelsea won trophies. Chelsea won the leagues. Chelsea won the Champions Leagues. When Manchester City took the money and they were in the top, they won the, the trophies. Yeah, they won treble. They won league titles. My problem with Spurs is that when they were close to the top, they didn't win. Yeah, they literally. Whose fault? Be honest now, Daniel Levy. It's Daniel, I don't know, it's Daniel Levy or a culture, or people say it's a culture. I have no idea, Allah. I genuinely have Conte, no idea. Do you remember Conte's speech before he got sacked? Yeah, do he said we'll, they will never win How anything. How many times here? under this owner in the last 20 years we did not win anything? It's the truth. So you're yeah. telling me, let's let's all be honest. I know Chelsea fans in the chat, they want to poch out on all this. Pochettino was very good at Spurs. They had Mourinho and they had prime Conte. Prime coming off winning the with your club with Inter Milan coming off yeah. winning with with Inter Milan even Nuno Santos not a bad manager you're telling me all these all these managers are not good enough to win a trophy you're telling me all these managers are not good enough to win a trophy just like you have a horrible arab impression you make me sound russian you make me sound like makarov from call of duty you get me now back to to to, to spurs not all of them not all of them are bad managers and by the way, all these managers have been successful with all the other clubs. Conte, successful Inter, successful Chelsea. Mourinho, successful every single club, including Roma. You get me? Like, people have been successful. Bro, yeah, Nuno... he, won, he won a trophy with Roma. Bro, everyone won trophies. The only difference with Spurs is they have this owner. I'll, t- I'll tell you right now. Why were Spurs unsuccessful? Why? When they were on top of the world. Manchester City were at the top, right? Centurions. There were two clubs fighting together. Who is going to overtake Man City? Liverpool or Spurs? Liverpool or Spurs? Spurs decided to build a stadium in their strong when they had their strongest ever team. <laughs> you get me? And Liverpool decided to buy Allison and Van Dijk. One team won a Champions League and a Premier League. The other team went on to just be con- continuous losers. They spent zero million in a period of two, three years, and they did not support Pochettino. The thing That's about it, you know, do you know the, the thing about it is that. As long as they keep making top four, they solidify, them, they solidify themselves on the top six table. Yes. The only team of the top six that hasn't won recent trophies, right? Like I can remember. When I mean recent trophies, I mean Premier Leagues or the Champions Leagues is Tottenham Hotspur. With all due respect, and, and listen, Tottenham Hotspur sometimes I have to accept it. It's no disrespect in your club, but as simple as... You just did it. I can't remember Spurs other than the Champions League final against uh, Liverpool. That's your recent history. This is it. You're welcome, Arsenal fans and Chelsea fans. Like in, Spam, you'll never say, walk alone in the Spurs. chat right now because because of me, you can walk the streets of London. Arsenal and Chelsea fans, write YNWA right now in the chat. You owe me forever for the rest of your life. You owe me. Like Carry like on. people think that I'm disrespecting Tottenham Hotspur. No. We'll talk about the game now, but that's the problem with Spurs is that in recent history, I can't remember you as someone who won trophies. And I'm going to tell you one thing in Italy. This literally happened to Roma. Roma won the league with, back in the days, with Capello. And they had the Totti. And they didn't win anything. And they kept going and dragging. And they kept challenging Inter once. Juventus, you challenge, you know what I mean? You know, they have the Mancinis, they have this, they have that. But they didn't win. People forgot that Roma is part of the pack of the big guys. They just forgot. They literally forgot about it until they won a trophy. But still, you need to win a trophy to at least put yourself in the top six table forever. 
But anyway. And by the way, when we say win a trophy, we don't mean Carabao Cup and FA Cup. We mean like a Prem uh, or a Prem Champions. or Champions League. I, I don't count. By the way, which Spurs had the capability of winning? Let's get that in as well. They had the capability of winning. Now, the domestic cup, winning an FA Cup or a Carabao Cup would not have put Spurs on the mountains of world football, but at least it would have given them something. You get me? But now yeah, there are like some nothing. Arsenal fans just claimed to the FA Cup for, uh, trophies that they won over the past 20 years. Yeah. At least they can brag like about At least that. an Arsenal fan can say, yeah, we're crap, but we won an FA Cup. We won FA Cups. We, we, they can count FA Cups. We won Cups. Yeah. You know, to be fair, it's fair, the one trophy they have is they have the best concerts in London. Back to the games now. And the when you look at the team to today, the is great. You, you, know, you know why I, I say what I say about, about Inch Postecoglou? Vicario, Poro, Romero, Dragusen, Udogi, Sar, Bisuma, Madison, Kulisevsky, Werner, and Son. Other than Van de Ven, who was on the bench, you get me? That's the starting lineup. Team. Yeah, this is their starting lineup. And your starting lineup could not basically destroy Luton. This is this is the reality. They could not, like, you know, like they only had one more shot on target than Luton did. They had four shots on target. Yeah, one them. of the things I noticed in this game, because uh, let me open my notes, I said that. Spurs weren't in control. Like, it didn't feel yeah. like they were in control. It felt like Ross Barkley is able to bypass that midfield. Like, Adi, like, if they were, yeah. Luton were able to get the ball to the wings and cross. Like, it's all right. Like, it didn't look like, well, like, it didn't look like Spurs were in control the whole game. You know what I mean? And for Sukoglu, yes, you tried to play this tiki-taka football. The problem, I still believe, the caliber of players, they are up and down. The likes of Timo Werner has one move now. He goes to the left, cuts to his left foot, and just whip it across. The guy has no invention, has no innovation, has nothing. Kulisevsky on the right side, if he's crap, now both wingers are shit. They're done, they're over, your game is over. Because you have to go through the midfield. Madison today, if we will talk about Madison, he was trying his best to play. He played some mm -hmm. balls behind to Timo Werner, who's absolutely garbage. Played the ball Kulusevski. Kulusevski couldn't dribble, couldn't do anything. That's the difference between having Saka and Martinelli and having Kulusevski. Well, by the way. Huh? Well, well, no, no, no. One second. I'm going to take that back one step. That's the difference between having Saka and Martinelli and having these mm -hmm. players. No problem. If you were to ask a Spurs fan right now, would you rather have Saka. Son on the wing or Saka on the wing? What would he say? No, but Son was yeah. top. Son was trying. So Son is, of course, Son is, was not bad today, to be honest. Was not the worst guy in the pitch. But yeah, you cannot. Not the worst guy in the pitch, yeah. But you cannot play. To be honest with you, you cannot play with the two guys on the side. They were absolutely horrendous. What's the difference between Angel Postecoglou and Brandon Rogers? Footy judge more. Tell the world right now. Yalla. What's the difference? Brandon mm -hmm. Rogers was fifth with Leicester. What do you mean? Is it is it because of his accent and he's cringy in press it's who conferences? who we are, mate, yeah? No, I think he yeah, plays very because, good football. Because it's who we are, mate. No, I think he plays he won, very good football. And he, he won three good fraudulent good. manager of the month at the start of the season. This is this is where he is. First month, they draw to Brentford. I don't think he's that bad. I think he's good. I think First month, they draw to Brentford 2-2. They scrape past Man United. They give him manager of the month out of pity. Arteta goes on to win five, six games in a row. They still give him manager of the month. The month later, Klopp wins every single game and they still give him the manager of the month. This is the guy. Well, Brandon Rogers got fifth with Leicester. Now what? Bro, I exactly. believe it's a yeah. new season, new year for him, and he has done very good. That's what I mean. This first team, okay, hold on. This first team, they were eight, they were count like eighth last year. Yeah, they, they invested, they invested wrong, which is, I believe, they invested wrong. Only Van der Ven is good. Van der Ven and Vicario and Madison. No, I'll take that back. They actually they invested well. well the problem, great. okay, the problem with them is that they didn't invest on the sides. Manu Solomon and Timo Werner and Brandon Johnson aren't good signing. You're literally playing with no wingers. You're playing yes. with no wingers. Yes. Now, and also, don't try, to, don't try it more. This I am here to dunk on you on footy judgment no, on no, your no. own backyard. La 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 la. Convince Go me. Right now. Convince me why Ange is better than Brendan. I'll tell you. I Ange you. To, so this is my this is my argument for Ange Postuko. Yeah. Came to a team that was distraught last year, was eighth, mm -hmm. was terrible. Got the best mm -hmm. out of someone like Sar, someone like uh, even Romero has gotten better. Pedro Poro has gotten better. Your doggy looks mm -hmm. good, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, they concede a lot of goals. Even up top, Richardson has scored goals, even though he's atrocious. So he's utilizing him. Right, my point they play very attractive football, very attacking football. They control the majority of the games they played when they had their starting 11. Lately, though, they haven't done this. 
But to be honest, these are the reasons why I think Ansh Postokolk, it's not about the position on the table, because if I use position on the table, you would say, but Poch, I'm going to tell you, Poch is 11th. You cannot use only position on the table with a team like uh, Spurs and a team like Chelsea. As the if you gave Poch Son alone, he would be fourth right now. That's if if some, but some maybes. I'm talking about the current. They don't situation. have a player of that quality. No, no, no. That's if and cut some, if, if but and maybe, okay? My point is, I believe Spurs in the first 10 games, they were great. They looked absolutely great. They got a lot of injuries and then the Asian Cup. And I don't think anybody anybody can say that Ange Postecoglou has been bad. Here is the problem with Ange, though. The problem with Ange Postecoglou is he hasn't... Yes, he's very stubborn. He doesn't want to adapt. No adaptation whatsoever. He doesn't want to adapt. Yeah. That's the problem with Ange Postecoglou, right? He, he doesn't have... For some People say that Ange Postecoglou has experience. Yes, he has experience. But the experience in the Premier League and the Italian League and the Le Liga and the Bundesliga are different than playing the Scottish League, are different than playing the Australian League or the Japanese League. This is just different. Okay, can but, I just make one final statement on this before we move on to ahead. the more relevant Chelsea club? Brendan Rodgers played attractive football, improved all the Leicester players. That's why they got moves to bigger clubs. Won an FA Cup with Leicester. And if you want to talk about Scottish League, he actually won a nine out of nine tro trophies in Scotland. He won every single EFL Cup version in Scotland. Won every single Scottish Cup and won three Scottish Prem Premier Leagues in a row. Just saying, mm -hmm. there, is, there is literally no one that can convince me. Ange is even Brandon, better than the problem Brandon with Rogers. Brandon Rogers. The problem with Brandon Rogers is one thing: is that he coached Stephen Gerrard, who slipped, and he couldn't win the Premier League. Here we go. Here if we go. Gerrard you didn't slip, you wanna, you wanna if Gerrard, let me finish. If Gerrard, if Gerrard didn't slip, Brandon Rogers would have had a Premier League to his No, to his if Brandon Rogers was more tactically adaptable, which is also his problem, we would have won the Premier League, but he wasn't. Let me do this couple of super chats. Guys, Leave get Gerard your opinions in. We're talking like about if Gerard, if Gerard didn't slip, he would have won the Premier League. Brandon yeah, Rogers. you think Gerard is better than Xavi. Stop acting, uh, talking about him like you think he's a bad player. It's unlucky. Yeah, I never speak about Gerard as a bad player. Have you ever is seen Gerard me? better than Xavi? Footy judge more. Is yeah, Gerard yeah. better than Xavi? Yes. Okay. As a football player, I would, Chav, you heard over that. I would, I would definitely take Gerard over Xavi. Brilliant. That's what... Bro, I've been saying this for a year now. You've known me for a year. Yeah, and I'm, and I'm glad I've said this for a year, it right and it's now. not recent, bro. It's not I'm recent. I'm glad the chat can hear it right now and dunk on your head right now in the chat. See, see I would take Gerard it. over Xavi as a football player, 100. I love what's to just the difference throw the between base. Everton. What's the difference between Everton and Spurs? Andrew, I'll tell you what's the difference. Everton in their prime era won nine league titles. <laughs> Even Everton have nine league titles. <laughs> Spurs. <laughs> Nothing. Oh my god. You think Xavi is better than Gerard? I'm not I'm not involved in this conversation. Go to the next super chat. Watch him. Watch him. Watch him. He no, no, I'm not him. involved in this conversation. You can hold and I'm not asking time. you to, to get involved. I actually believe that and I stick by it. Okay, perfect. You are in a house with fire. Don't drag me in. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Why is this a fire? 70 percent position and 17 shot, yet we are bad. That's for you, Hassan. Explain uh, 17 people. shots could, could could mean anything. Were the shots dangerous? Were they from dangerous positions? You know, like there's a there's a lot. You cannot just say shots. The Brentford one, why it was dangerous, is because the amount was 31 shots, which happens rarely, and they hit the post five times. To be honest with you, the XG shows Luton is 0.39 and Spurs should have scored three goals. That's what <laughs> it says. It's fine. I still think Ainge is overrated, though. I'm not I'm not gonna change my mind on that. He's not that bad. Do you believe he can improve though? Bro, he's been managing from before I was born. He's not a manager who's going to change the way he thinks about football now. Yani. He's been managing 30 years almost. I'm, 20, I'm 28. I'm going to be 29, inshallah, in May. And the guy's been managing before I was even born. Uh, smoke. Uh, this is kind of... Most underrated footballer of all time. Mine is Busquets. Most underrated? Most underrated footballer of all time. This is a good question, to be honest. It's a very good question. I like super chess like this. Yes, this is a, a very good one. A very good one. Who who had who doesn't have the respect of the people like he should do? Probably one of the more underrated. If I'm gonna go old school, I actually know that the question. I know the answer for me. Tell That's me Wayne. your answer because maybe Wayne it's Rooney. Rooney. Wayne Rooney. Wayne Rooney, Rooney doesn't get and. Oh, sometimes people forget to mention Rooney at all when they talk about Premier League greats. At all, like at all. 
You want I me know. to tell you who I think is the most underrated footballer of all time? I'm talking about the Premier League, though. Hmm. Okay, outside Premier League, I'd say Angel Di Maria. Probably. Very underrated, very disrespected, never looked at as one of the best wingers of all time, even though he should be. I think uh, Angel, Angel Di Maria is a good shout. Angel Santi Cazorla, good shout as well in the chat. Santi Firmino, Cazorla. good shout to an extent. Very, very, uh, very Musa good. Musa Dembele, shot. actually, that we spoke about earlier on, is another. Musa Dembele shot. is absolutely fantastic shout, to be honest. He's a baller. The problem is, when I say underrated, I say they should be rated higher than what they actually are. If you change the question to most disrespected footballer of all time, I'll say Mo Salah right now. By far, yeah, the yeah, most 100%. superstar in football. Without history. a shadow of a doubt, Mohamed yes. Salah is the most disrespected footballer of, of in the Premier League history, in my opinion. Yeah, I agree with uh, that. Jerome, Mo, stop making excuses for Spurs. They won the game, ya yeah, Jerome. <laughs> Every team has had injuries. This man claiming best starting 11 every day. So that's not me doing that. And, and I'm going to say something that from now on... Why use that logic for Rashford? Can I, can I, okay, so from now on, let me just tell you one thing. From now on, I don't want to judge people unless it's banter for their fan base rating of a player. Like I want to judge based on my rating of a player. I actually believe... Rashford should should do more. Does that make sense? Rashford should do way okay, more that than makes what he sense. does. Yes. Okay. That makes sense. I am not gonna rate I like Jerome. Let me let me explain to you. I am not gonna go on Arsenal fans who put like Egal, aka Egal, who put eight players in the starting eleven of Real Madrid, for example, and nine. judge Arsenal nine and judge Arsenal based on this. I'm gonna judge him based on what I think they should do and if they are doing it or not. Does that make sense? I am not gonna, for example, I am not gonna judge. Uh, Curtis Jones based on Ryan's rating of Curtis Jones, for example. I'm yes, not, not going to do that. Huh? Yeah, I'm not going to do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, so that's it. So I'm not giving excuses to Spurs. At the end, Spurs won today. They scraped a win at home. But at the end, if they get top four, I think it's an achievement for them. I literally think it's a good achievement for them. Do you, do you think that would be a successful season or not? Top four. They're not fifth. Lost. Not fifth. Fourth. Of course, bro. Of course, it's a successful season. This is Tottenham Hotspur. Any right. anything in top four is successful for them. So we bro. agree then. We agree. Yeah. 100% it's successful. This is a very good shout, actually. The people that say Philip Lamb. Very, very good shout. No, but Philip Lamb is not underrated. Philip Lamb is rated very highly. Most overrated footballer of all time. I'm going to let Hussam answer. Easiest answer. Easiest Go answer. Paul ahead. Scholes. Paul Scholes. I grew up playing football. Let me tell the people a story. I grew up playing football in the UAE. I didn't grow up in the streets of England. I didn't grow up in the streets of London. I didn't grow up anywhere. No, no, keep the super chat on so they know their, 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 they know their context. I grew up in the UAE playing football. Every day I used to go and they used to tell us Steven Gerrard or Frank Lampard. I have never, ever seen a fan base, change the entire legacy and change everything that was said about a footballer after he retired. Coles is the only footballer in football history that as soon as he retired, suddenly he became better than what we saw with our own eyes. Lampard and Gerrard were the machine. Scholes was a cog in the machine. If Paul Scholes never played for Manchester United a single season, Man United would still have 13 Premier Leagues, they would still have two Champions Leagues. And actually... They won the Champions League that he didn't play in and they lost the one that he played in. Thank you very much for coming. Paul Scholes, easiest answer of all time. My answer is very simple. It's General Piquet. That's actually a very good one as well. I, I, he I, literally I benefited from Barcelona and met Leo Messi. Leo Messi released pressure from General Piquet. Every time someone went on General Piquet one-on-one, -on -one, they dunked on his face. And it doesn't matter if it's Atletico Bilbao forward, Real Sociedad, Sociedad Granada forward, it didn't matter. General Piquet was good passing the ball in Pep Guardiola's system. Right? And because of Messi, is there. That's my opinion. A lot of Barcelona players. But anyway, it is what it is. You know my stance on this thing. Uh, no more. We let in 50 goals and Gerard wasn't a DM. I blame Rodgers for the title blow. Goalie and defense was rubbish. Firmino is most underrated player. Eh, it's all right. You, you know deep down, more that Rodgers really is to blame. Yeah, for that yeah I know. He's, he's, he's kind of... 
But he's he's unlucky that Gerard. You know, because him. when Chelsea came to town, a draw would, would have been good enough. Sometimes but you have to play your you cards. You don't right. think you don't think that he's just unlucky that Gerard slipped. No, I don't. Do think you remember unlucky. the game with Chelsea on top in that game yeah. at all? No, no, I, I remember that game. Everyone, everyone, and their mom knew Mourinho was going to park the bus. But that's now it. Have, yes. Now we. We had them Baba up top. Yeah, but they never. But we didn't have to be that open and that expensive. We didn't. That's the reality. We didn't have to be that That's open and that story. expensive. And a draw would have been good enough. Brendan Rodgers went gung ho in every single game. And by the way, the game that lost us. Well, why do they keep saying Chris Istanbul? If it didn't cost us the league, that's the game that lost uh, lost us the league factually. Did Steven Gerrard slip three times every time Palace scored a goal? No, he didn't slip three times. He didn't. That's the reality. Uh, Nilut Pal, oh, member for two months. Mo was Romario underrated. I actually believe Romario was one of the most underrated footballers. Hassan didn't watch Romario. Hassan is too young. Yeah, I didn't watch Romario. him. You did? No, no, I said I didn't. If you watch Romario in 1994 in the World Cup, um, and you watch like his Barcelona, I was too young as well, but I watched highlights. But I watched the World Cup fully, 94. <laughs> it's the first, first actual competition to watch for me. He is so good. It's unbelievable. He's not R9, but he is fantastic. So, yeah, I, I hear what you're saying. Uh, we had Ali, Sesco, Aspa, Sako, and Mignolet. That's for you, Hassan. No, that's not for me. That's for you, Habibi, because he's talking about the defense. No, if yeah, I bring talking Neymar, about You're talking about Brandon Rogers being bad, but he had these guys in the back. No, 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 no. But that's the point. That, that's the thing. He had that these guys the in the back, bro. That's not a Premier League winning defense, bro. I am. Not a and he made team. you challenge for the You could put Neymar, Suarez, and Messi with that five at the back, and they're still not winning. And he made Mignolet, you challenge for the John five Flanagan, yeah. Sacco. You get me? Don't let me go there, bro. You Call can't have Dupre, it both. Martin yeah, Skartel. Sam, Sam, you cannot have it both. Did he have a good squad or he had a bad squad? No. The squad was not a good enough squad to win the Premier League. However, but he had you challenging, you are in right? Position, with three games to go, the same way with Leicester. Leicester wanted to avoid the relegation. The game, but when they were top of the league, now they want to win the league. Same thing for us. Yeah. Now all he had to do was get a draw. He couldn't get a draw versus Chelsea. Tevin, another player that is so underrated. The problem is, I think Rikelmi's time in Europe is underwhelming a little bit. His time with Villarreal is the most shining time for him. So his yeah, time, it was very good he didn't well. have a good time in a, in a top club like Barcelona mm -hmm. or Real Madrid or Milan or, or Juventus. I think so. So that's why I... I, I now, I if you go to Argentina and ask them, they have a different story to tell you. Yeah, yeah, but, but the problem is we watch European football. So kind of like you need yeah. to have a... Uh, uh, guys, your super chats are amazing, to be honest. They keep that conversation. Al Alaba, most underrated... Uh, of all time, of all time, Alaba is no underrated. Alaba is just a good left back, bro. He's just good. No one's fixed on special. him. Alaba, Alaba is an underrated. He's a yeah, Alaba is just a good. Left he's back rightfully back. rated. Alaba, I yeah. believe, he's good, quick left back. Yeah, he's slash center like back. Under... Just good player. That's it. No, no, he's talking about. He's, he, I think he's he misunder. He, I, you're not talking about Alaba Bayern Munich. You're talking about Alba. Hordi Alba, or are you talking about actually David Alaba, Bayern Munich guy? No, he he's talking about Alaba. Alaba. Alaba is Alaba is good, but he's actually both of them are just normally rated. Yeah, yeah normally person. rated. Gerard SAS is Suarez, Sterling, Suarez, and Sturridge. Suarez, who's the A? They used to call him the SAS: Sturridge, Suarez, and Sterling. But this is okay. Sterling. Coutinho carried us. Oh, all right. I get what you're saying. Yeah. I get what you're saying. Thank you guys for supporting the channel. Sending super chats, getting super chats in. Of course, we have over 500 people here and we are almost on 350 likes. That's fantastic. Badr al Mutawa, most underrated of all time. <laughs> Badr al Mutawa, I'm sorry, Smoke. His last game he played against uh, Jordan. You know, uh, we beat them 3 0 in Kuwait. Very sad for him, but he's he's the best Kuwaiti footballer of all time. He's absolutely incredible. Badr Badr Mato, I wasn't bad at all. Uh, yeah, Roberto great. Baggio and Rui Costa are geniuses, never mentioned in legend conversations. I'm gonna tell you something. Roberto Baggio is why one of the reasons I love football, him and Romario in '94. Rui Costa probably is the most overrated player in that Milan side. 
Yeah, Roy Costa. And, and, and by the way, even Milan players said it. Said it when Kaka joined. And listen to, I think Seedorf said it or someone said it. I watched that interview. Yeah. When when Kaka arrived and they asked Ancelotti, are you gonna you have to play him? And this is over over Roy Costa. They're like, yes, over Roy Costa. <laughs> Roy Costa had the whole bench. Yes. They watched that interview. Yeah. yeah it's he actually eye-opening that a player that young comes into a, a Milan team like this and just bench Rui Costa, you know what I mean? Yeah. But Rui Costa, though, had swagger about him. Does that make sense? He had so much swagger about him playing football. That's why he's, like, fantastic. I think, actually, the most one of the most underrated players is one of the reasons I wear number seven all, all my career in football is not actually Cristiano Ronaldo. It's actually Luis Figo. I actually wear number seven because of Figo, not because of Cristiano Ronaldo. I'm, of course, I'm hoping for, for Cristiano. Man, that's uh, before your time, Yanni. After yeah, your time, yeah. sorry. Uh, appreciate you guys. Chelsea, though. Mm. Still have, Hamza is underrated. Hamza is definitely <laughs> underrated. Hamza is goat. In Hamza YouTube goat. world, in YouTube world, there are goats. Hamza's one of Yesterday. them. Yesterday on Lahua, the guy was like, let me start the Liverpool to Chabe Alonso. And the first, first sentence was, what a shameless fan base. <laughs> yes. Hamza first is sentence is, what a shameless fan Hamza base. Hamza is the goat, bro. Hamza is absolutely the goat. He is, he is. Wallahi, like, uh, guys, you guys have no idea. I love, just listen, sometimes he waffles and I, you see my eyes open from the waffle, but he's just entertaining. He's just very entertaining, to be honest. And he's a very nice person, by the way. Hamza is one of the nicest guys ever. Uh, in my, but listen, Chelsea Football Club. Chelsea fans, what are you saying? Last Super Chat I'm going to do, and the next Super Chat I'm going to do them in a stop. Right? If Firmino wasn't there, would Salah and Mani be good? Mm, it's a combination, though. It's a combination. But Firmino allowed it, Andrew. I hear what you're saying. Firmino allowed it. No one ever speaks on Alaba. You guys, super. Can I do the super chats, guys? Get your super chats in, because we want to talk about chess. I'm, I promise you, we'll respond to every single one of them, each and every single one of them. Wallahi, we're not gonna skip anyone. LSG, I see your super chat. I'm gonna respond to it. I'm gonna give all the super chats the time they deserve. I promise you. If you want to talk about something we spoke about now, Chelsea Football Club, Pochettino has to be sacked. The reason why it has to be sacked, to be honest, in my opinion, and it's not about it's not about their players' performances today. Uh, was, uh, put out, put out, put out. Here we go. Today, yeah. hold on. Today, it was mostly on the players. They created Thank so you. many chances. Uh, defensively, they were absolutely atrocious. Out of position, Badia Shirley looked horrendous. Disassi looked horrendous. Uh, I think the defense was absolutely terrible. And by the way, people have to understand something. Yes, they created a lot of chances, but it's the same energy we have for Ange, we'll have for Poch. The, te the team was way wide open. The positioning of the Chelsea midfielders and defense is terrible. And that's on the coach. It's, not on, it's on the players that missed a lot of chances. This game could have been 3-0. Easy. But the defensively, in the set pieces, it's part of the coaching staff. It's part of his coaching staff. So Pochettino has to hold corn for this. This is what people, this is what Hussam failed to, to elaborate. Hussam talks about going forward, chances created, all the stuff. Chelsea still defensively, they are suspect. Very suspect. And it's positioning. It's players being far from each other. It's putting both flanks up at the same times. That's where I have to say Poch is to blame for the goals and for the chances conceded. That's my take on the game. However, Nicola Jackson, by the way, yes, he missed chances. He didn't play terrible. Uh, Cole Palmer played all right. Uh, by the way, Modric, by the way, didn't play bad today. He didn't play bad. But he wasn't great, but he didn't play bad. Raheem Sterling, though, can someone sell this guy already? Did you see the header he missed? I, I don't know. Raheem Sterling is the most overrated player ever in English football. Ever. I said it. I think you're kissing the Chelsea fans' ass and you're just telling them what they want to hear. No, I don't. Because you're, you I just want to blame Poch because it's just what everyone does. Today, today, and me and you are on the same group chat, the, mo the, the biggest Poch outers today did not blame Poch. 
cannot blame Poch. Yeah, today but you have to have him out because he conceded chances today. Even even the substitution that he made, even the substitution that he made worked because Sterling got the assist to Palmer. That's his options, bro. That's who he has. You know, you know our problem. I realized something. Me and you have a problem. Yeah, At the start do. of the season, we 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 got fooled by Chelsea fans. Because Chelsea fans try to convince the whole world that they actually have good players. I told people, no, they don't have good players. People need to understand the players are actually crap. The players are actually crap. People just need to get this through their heads. Not crap. The only player, let's, you know, Hamza, we're talking about Hamza being a goat, صح? Let's talk about what Hamza says. Listen to what Hamza actually says and not how he says it. They spent 1.5 billion and a Chelsea Academy and a City Academy product is their best player. Explain it to me. Yalla. I want to know how, how what does this indicate sometimes okay, I'm going to tell you I'm going to tell you one I'm going to tell you something spends 1.5 billion pounds you get me and they amortize and they do all this crap then a then a player then a player who comes from the city academy cannot be your best player by definition okay because because it just means you made shit recruitment that's yeah. the reality can i explain to you something last season yes. when a lot of Liverpool fans, and I always say that, and I'm very consistent about this, by the way, over the years. If one player or two players are not performing well, you blame the player. But if I have over five, six, seven players aren't performing, I blame the coaching staff. Unless you're telling me that all these players are actually crap, crap, like just terrible. They cannot play football. They're not that bad, bro. I think... Based on what, though, they're not that bad? Can you tell me? Based, because you're going based on potential. You're going on based yeah. what they could be four years from now. Sah or no? Be honest with yourself. They're not that bad. Hussam, okay, let me just... They are not 11th. Should they be 11th on the table? Bro, I predicted them to come 8th, 7th. 11th, not that deep. Yeah. I said 7th or, or 8th, yes. Okay, no, so 11th is too far. How is it too far, bro? How is it too far? Even factually speaking, factually speaking, 7th is literally four points off of 11th. So it's not even that far away, Aslan. Yeah, I know, but they have been 11th for a while now. I think you're misunder... I, I don't think you're getting the point here. They have been 11th for a while. For a while. And I mean, weeks. I actually believe just put the up, fact... Has if if I was... Yeah, I wait. Put up, just put up his comment, Hashan, so you'd get my point. Just put Abdi has comment right now. Only Palmer, Gusto, and Caicedo... No, no, go down, down. Only Palmer, Gusto, and Caicedo are worthy to start. That's what he said, yeah? So, th this is the money that Chelsea spent. No Caicedo? Caicedo? No Enzo? And you could tell me three players. That so, can, the same that... guy that told me I will take Enzo at my club is saying that Enzo uh, doesn't deserve to start? Have some shame. Don't change my words. You think that a good coach can utilize Enzo's potential, right? That's what you said. This is your words, not mine. I think Enzo is a better player than Maino. Very simple. Okay. I think the fact... And actually, I actually think the problem with this is that when a team collapses like this, I think you have to look at the coaching staff. Mo, if they, they sack Poch, what will happen? Yeah, it doesn't matter. I don't, I don't give a fuck. I don't give a no, fuck. No, but, but you cannot say that, though. No, no, no. I'm not a scout. You can go get a manager. Go get Conte. Go get Mourinho. Conte and Mourinho are on the bench now. Are, are not coaching. Go get Conte That's and Mourinho. Point. Wallah al I am being serious. Wallah al I am being serious. Sack Poch. Go get Mourinho and Conte to make men out of these bums. Conte and Mourinho do not work with children. They don't. So give them one year contract to make men out of this. No pressure. The problem, I get what you're saying. Absolutely, you're right. You're right. Mourinho and Conte would not work with kids. However, they don't. You know why they won't work with kids? Because they're asked to win leagues. They're asked to win okay. trophies. But get Mourinho and Conte. And you think them, Mourinho would accept being the transition guy? Mourinho is going to say, I'm going to work with these guys? Yeah, Mourinho would no, accept. Be honest. Don't be disingenuous. I, 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 will, I, I will genuinely Mourinho believe Mourinho, be would accept, Mourinho, Mourinho would accept a one-year contract with Chelsea. I think I, this is my No, opinion. he won't because Mourinho is a winner. No, he won't. That's Mourinho what I think. That's what I think is going to happen. So I you're believe saying Mourinho, Mourinho is going to accept Ole Gunnar Conte. Conte okay. Okay. Let me tell you the statement. I think Mourinho will accept a one-year contract with an option to extend another year, right? For Chelsea only. Based I actually on believe. Based on what? Based on his hour work. 
for Chelsea only, he's managed Spurs and Man United. No, but uh, he, he's in rivals. love with Chelsea. Chelsea fans will open. No, he's will so absolutely... in love with Chelsea, he managed Spurs. You know Spurs are bigger rivals for Chelsea than Arsenal? You know this? Uh, it doesn't matter. I, I think it matters. I think he will accept it. I think he will accept it. Uh... Bro, Chelsea. these Chelsea owners are not going to get a manager who is going to call them out publicly. They're not going to get a manager who's going to challenge them publicly. They want a yes man. They want a puppet. Mourinho will never be a puppet. Course, and you're never so disrespectful to the we'll great Jose Mourinho that won you a treble that you think no, Jose Mourinho could he's do washed. the Ole Gunnar Solskjaer role at, at Chelsea he's and washed, come be the transition bro. guy. He's washed, bro. He's done. His tactics are done, bro. He just Whose tactics to... are done? Mourinho. So what's the point of getting you just uh, to make the... men? You're not hearing me. To make men out of these people. He cannot make he cannot make a man out of a child. He can't. The he only can. way these guys become men is if they play more and more and more football and get more and more and more ex experience. That's yeah, it. he made a man out of Robin. He made a man out of Drogba. He, the players that joined him. You're comparing Robin and Drogba to the players that Chelsea have yeah, now. Man, I, no, I'm talking about the age. Jackson. I'm talking about the age. I'm talking Jackson, about the age. Jackson, Sterling. Right. Mudrik, Madhuwek. You're not listening. You're not listening. Forget Apologize sorry. to the Chelsea not... fans right now. Why? You're not Damien listening. Duff. Damien Duff is... Wait! Let me talk. Line. Yes, I'm not saying about the quality. I'm talking about the age. I'm talking about the age. He can get these guys to be men. Forget the quality. They might not have the quality. They might not have the quality of the old players. Yes. But he can make at least men out of them. Mourinho did not sign children, Mo. Stop lying to yourself. Was Drogba Mourinho signed players who are ready made to win in their prime age at least. Minimum 25, 26, 27. Five players. When he signed people at Chelsea, he joined Chelsea at 2004. Yeah, he was 26. I was I'm wrong. I'm wrong. Exactly. Sit on the floor. Sit on the floor. I told you. Yeah, I know my history, brother. But but Drog, he didn't join like okay, that's for a different a different different. Yeah, thing. exactly. 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 But you guys don't think that Mourinho will make men out of these people. Bro, Mourinho will not work under Todd Bowley because he wants a puppet, Yachi. How many times do I have to tell you the biggest problem oh, at Chelsea is their own? So stay with Chelsea, Pochettino. So you think, you think Pochettino can turn it around then? I think sacking Pochettino will achieve nothing. Okay. Can Pochettino turn it around? If Pochettino gets sacked, all it does is hit the reset button. That's it. Reset, yalla. Let's try again with another new bum puppet manager. No difference. But this one okay. failed already. Bro, it's not Pochettino's fault. It's Stanley, Win Stanley, and Stewart. Why do I know their names as a Liverpool fan? How is this possible? Because they're the reason why they changed the entire culture and ethos of Chelsea Football Club. This has absolutely nothing to do yeah, with well, the I, mean, I, I, I genuinely believe my opinion on this. They need a coach to make men out of these people. Somehow. Brother, Conte and Mourinho are both not puppets and they both refuse to work with kids. All right. so and the no same directors who chose Enzo and chose Mudrik and chose all these fraudulent players are going to choose the next manager. We'll see. I, I believe, like, to be honest with you, like, I watched Conti work with Bastoni, work with Barella. Yes, he wanted experience. But he did make some, some men out of them, to be honest. He you're did. comparing Bastoni and Lautaro. Barella. No, I'm not again. You're, 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 I'm, talking I'm talking about what the age. I'm talking about the age. Why I have some shame, Mo? No, I'm talking about the age. Marella alone is, is better than the whole Chelsea midfield. Put yeah, I, I am not talking about the. I'm Why not are we talking ignoring about, quality, Mo? Um, because the quality can develop. Some of them aren't that okay, bad. Yeah, the quality can go from 11th to 8th. Yeah, Allah. Let's sack the manager because oh, Allah, so be what you're telling Chelsea fans is that there is no solution. You have to fire and sack all these players and get new players. Yeah, the only solution is getting experienced players and getting Stanley and Stewart out. That's the only solution. All right, then. Getting a new I manager. Right now Listen, if you're gonna nothing. tell me, if you're gonna tell me more transfers, I can't disagree with you. I'm gonna say I can't disagree with you. Okay, yeah, they need more. Transfers. I actually said that in the beginning of the season. Players. I said without, I said without experience, Chelsea will not win. Simple. Yeah, but they need experienced players, though. Not just any like transfer. Yeah, I think they need experience. And they no, need I think they need, they need a 27. Actually... Do you know what they need? You need that forward line, need an Ivan Tony. Yes, and he's experienced. But yeah, you know that, what they will that do? That forward line need an Ivan Tony. But you know what Chelsea will do, sir? I don't know. Speaking of inexperience, you know who they will sign? Victor Jokeres. Because wow. that, that guy fits the Chelsea model. I wouldn't. So to answer the question, people ask me would they take Pocha enter? Not at the current moment.
Not at the current moment. Inzaghi is a better manager than Pochettino. I agree yeah. with that. Inzaghi, when he wins the league this season, he will have a good CV, he will have a good resume. Yes, with... and, and when you look at Pochettino, by the way, because people, you know, listen, at the end of the day, statistics don't lie. Today, against Burnley, they had 70% possession, 33 shots, 13 shots on target. They had 12 corners. Bro, their front line so, is just so what about so what about the de- their defense? What about the 18 shots, the seven shots on okay, target? Now you're being honest. The defense is a constructive criticism of Poch, 100 percent Yeah, but that's the point. It's not only I never said that they yeah, don't get him just on the defensive side alone. Well done. It's both aspects of the game, the same way you criticized Ange. The same no, way you criticized Ange. Ange. Okay, hold on. Ange has much Let's be objective. Play. The same yeah. way we criticize Ange, I'm saying. Chelsea create chances. They go forward, right? But at the same time, defensively, in the midfield, they're wide open the majority of the time in transition. I get what you're and saying. And their defense, their defense is, 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 is all over the place. How many times they got beat in the far post because Malagosto is not covering, because Reese James is not covering, because Kukurea cannot cover. That's coaching. Which That's player right. at Chelsea starts for Spurs? I believe Malagosto is a conversation with okay. Pedro Porro. Um, Caicedo probably starts over Sar. Over Sar, um, Sun starts up top as a, as a left wing for sure for Sterling or Modric without a shadow of a doubt. Madison starts for Kona Galaga. Um, so two players. Hold on, uh, Caicedo starts. Um, Caicedo Palmer Gusto, so that's the three. Caicedo Palmer Gusto, yeah, probably. Okay, that's arguably. fine. No problem. Arguably. No problem. Arguably, yeah. that's still that's... nine Spurs players and a Spurs Chelsea combined yeah. in them. Fair enough. I, I get. They what have much better players, bro. But, but I, so there is I... a there is an argument. There is an argument of these players are playing bad because Pochettino is setting up is setting them bad. Look, boy, when you say setting them up bad, did they not have plenty of defensively? Chances? It's not about the position. Pep Guardiola. So let me explain to you something. And I'm not comparing, before you jump the gun and say, comparing Pep to Poch. Pep Guardiola, for example, sets his team up to, to have 70% position and attack and have 50 shots. Mm-hmm. But the, apart from this season, and even this season, when they lose the ball, they are positioned right to get the second ball. Jurgen Klopp yeah. is the same guy. Jurgen Klopp, yeah. at his prime, used to set up his team to attack, attack, like... People said the rock and roll football, whatever. You used to have a yeah. lot of position. Stats don't lie. You used to have 60% position like Man Yeah, yeah I agree with you. Yeah. But when you lose the ball, your midfield, the Hendersons, the Fabinhos were and the defense were positioned right. So you aren't wide open. This Chelsea okay. team, when they concede position and when they lose the ball, they're wide open. And when you okay, bypass just, the press of Chelsea, they're wide open. Okay, I That's agree. That's why, let me finish the second point. That's why, okay, by the right. way, Chelsea this season looked better when they conceded position and gave position to the other team, they looked a better team. Some of the games they played today, they looked good in transition on the counter attack, bypassing the press. Because for some reason, Pochettino cannot find the right combination of having ball position and going forward and setting up his team to stop the attack on him and the transition and the counter attack on him. Does that because make the sense? the players aren't good enough to do that, bro. Mm, yes, we can have this. We can. And by the way, he's tried. Day. He's tried multiple different combinations. Yani. he's tried Madueke. He's tried Sterling. He's tried Mudrik. He's tried all these guys. That at the end of the day, they're just not good enough, bro. That's the reality. Many of these players are just not. But good. they aren't. My 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 argument with you. By the way, I sat on a lot on a lot of shows with you, and I agreed with you on this. Not good enough. My point is, if you are sitting eleventh of the table and you call yourself a big club, if it's Liverpool, Man City, no matter who the players are. And by the way, some of these players, they aren't like Fulham level. That's what we disagree. I don't think Enzo is bad. I don't think Enzo is a superstar, but I don't think he's bad. I believe Enzo isn't a bad player. I don't believe Caicedo is that bad of a player. I don't believe Jackson is that bad of a player, right? My problem with that is that the whole combination is 11th. With the performance that we're seeing week in, week out, it's warrant a sack for the manager. That's what I okay, believe. But this is the, you need to understand the reason why... The solution is not in Mo's hand. My point is, I agree with you. Mo says sack Poch, and I'm not saying... What's the next step? I don't care. I'm saying at the current moment, a big club spent money sitting 11th in the league. 
The manager needs to go because, because we cannot sack all these players. That's it. They have been getting worse every week, bro. In the beginning of the season, we used to brag and we used to talk about Chelsea on the pitch. It used to look good. Some games they play against Leeds, bro. They got dominated against Leeds. They script the win against but Leeds. Today they didn't look good. They looked okay, they looked good. That's why today it's mostly on the players. But also yes. the defensive side of the game was bad today. But overall, sitting 11th, week you look good, week you look bad. Suck the guy. With if if they were fifth, listen. If it's Ange Postecoglou sitting fifth and battling for top four, and a week good and a week bad, keep the manager. But sitting 11th and a week good and a week bad, sack the guy. That's my logic. Okay. My, the reason why they're a week good and a week bad is they're all young. They're all inexperienced. Many of them are not good enough. A lot of them are not good enough. You know, we allowed people to, to have votes for Gallagher in team of the season. And we trusted them. Never ever listen to Chelsea fans because the manager that they all told us is going to overtake Klopp's legacy two years ago is now about to not win the league with Bayern in the Bundesliga. That's, that's the guy that they told us two years ago is better than Klopp. Chelsea fans will are delusional and they'll always tell you that they have better players than they really do. The guy, the 85%... Can you not judge Chelsea... 85% Chelsea of the blame... Lays at the feet of Stanley and Stewart, 10% on Poch, 5% on the players. Today's game specifically, we're here to talk about today's game. Today's game, Chelsea had 500 chances to score, missed them all as per usual, and they ended up losing the game. That's the reality. Pedro Fitch made mistakes, you get me? And, and, and it's the same thing with their centre-backs, it's the same thing with the centre-back. Disassi will have a game where he's unbelievable, and then the next game he plays like shit. Why? Because he's young, he's inexperienced. Now, if you take Disassi, put him next to Van Dijk, now he has a leader next to him who can tell him, do this, do that, and then he gets better. That's just how football works. You know, that's it. That's just how football works. You look at Chelsea Football Club, and the reason why you cannot compare them to a Liverpool or to an Arsenal or to a United or to whoever, the reason why you can't compare them to any of these managers is none of our football clubs have had this £1.5 billion pound project where they have amortized young players, 25 young players on 10-year contracts. That is the problem. Root cause of the issue, them. Not Poch, not the players. Today, one of the things I can agree with you that it's not on Poch is that if Petrovic doesn't make that mistake, they might not they lose win. the game. However, yeah. they might win the game. However, the guy was wide open hitting the ball. Where was the setup, bro? Where was the setup of the, of the thing? But anyway, listen, we'll see what Chelsea do. On, on uh, I think that the, the game of the mediocre teams is going to be on Thursday, Chelsea and Manchester United. Uh, we'll see how it goes. It's going to be at Stamford Bridge. If I'm not mistaken, it's at Stamford Bridge. Yes. Yes, it's at Stamford Bridge. Uh, let me do the super chats and then we'll touch because I, I might need to go to have a star in like five, ten minutes or something. Um, oh, wow. There's a lot of super chats. <laughs> LSG saying, let me let me put a timestamp. Can you read the super chat? Let me put the timestamp. Uh, no one ever speaks on Alaba. Bear Champions Leagues, different leagues, plays left back, centre back, and CDM doesn't get spoken about because he's Austrian. He's the utility goat. I don't think he doesn't get spoken about because he's Austrian. Uh, me and Mo agree, bro. At the end of the day, he's properly rated. Not every player is underrated, overrated. Some players mm -hmm. are properly rated. With David Alaba, he played at Bayern Munich. Obviously, he has a lot of leagues, bro. Like he played at Bayern Munich, he played at Real Madrid. It's not like he's playing for Espanyol and he's playing for Leipzig and he's winning stuff. He's 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 one one other player who's a cog in the machine, not the machine. You know, you're not talking about Kimmich, you're not talking about Neuer, you're not talking about Lewandowski, you're talking about Alaba, respectfully. Could the, could he have been a replaceable player? Yes. So he's yeah. just properly rated. JW said without Palmer, Chelsea would be a relegation father, probably. No, well, because Burnley's there. Probably, mm -hmm. yes, you're right. Probably yeah. Palmer has done a lot. You know, Palmer. Oh, I'm not going to say it yet. What? Can, say it. Say it. Can Palmer, at the current moment, if he ends the season, he is 21 GA, if I'm not mistaken, this season. The six of them are penalties. When are we starting to talk about him as one of the good wingers of the league? Is if he has You're multiple right. seasons? One of the good ones. If he, I'm talking about the Sakas, like is that the bow? Like people are not, people aren't saying that. But the reason why I'm saying that. You're about to Does trigger it, the impact with the Arsenal fans. No, no, no. I'm being genuinely serious. Is it? It's not about continuity. It's not about the uh, how many seasons. I'm talking about this season. Or is it because he's 11th? We cannot say that. 
genuinely, I'm ge genuinely. I, I, this question came to my mind when I was watching the game because he literally had really good, bro. The guy had really good, like he could, he should have had two goals and an assist to Sterling if Sterling isn't a bum today, to be honest. This guy wants to compare Cole Palmer to Bukayo Saka. This season? Bukayo this Saka, season. you're so No, no, no. I'm talking about se this season, yeah, Allah. This season. Performance is this yeah, season. Whenever we do like, team of the seasons he's mentioned, you know, like... like who, who we are we compare? Okay, is he better than Mo Salah? Is he better than Mo Salah? No, not, not close. Okay, is he better than Saka? No, but can we have is this season... Is he better season? than Foden? Foden hasn't played as a winger this season a lot. So. Okay, but when he plays on the wing. But uh, can we have the conversation about this season? We aren't talking overall. No, I'm Maybe. saying this season. I'm saying this season. So your, this season. So your, your, your opinion he's already the convo, Mo. He's like, what's so up? So your, your opinion this season is that he's not on the same level as Saka. He's not a conversation between him and Saka and no, Foden Saka on the right side. Saka's a All right, then. All right. Yes. All right. Herman Zadik is saying, what's your favorite club from each of the other leagues? I don't. I promise you. I swear to God, I don't have a favorite club from any other league. I just don't. Like, I like yeah, Valencia I back in the days when it used to be the underdogs of Europe. Valencia back in the days in Villarreal. In England, it depends. Like, the, the, the Invincible team was very good with Robert Perez, Leonberg, Berkham. It's entertaining. You know what I mean? Like, I didn't, I don't have this thing about favorite club. I, yeah. I'm not sure about Hassan. I support Liverpool and Liverpool only, Herman. I have no favorite club. You get me. Yeah. Uh, Edward would ruin Mor Mourinho's reputation at Man United. Probably, but still Mourinho won the Europa League and came second in the league. Yeah, Todd Bowley, Winston Lee, Iqbali and, and Stewart are winning Pochettino's reputation at Chelsea. Yeah, 100%. Hussam! This Hussam guy is the Draymond Green of YouTube. Can you Can you explain why? You thought Draymond Green, you get me. And yeah, actually, that's a good uh, conversation. You know, I'm I'm very passionate about the sport. I love the sport. I understand the sport. And he's a champion. So, yeah. Draymond Green is yeah, a that's disgrace. That's a compliment. Draymond Green is a disgrace. But... I thought Dray Draymond, man. Uh, if Tony is worth 70 million plus, then Jota is 150. I don't know, Andrew. You know Jota's biggest problem? He's injury prone. He's that's injured it. all the time, Andrew. Uh, yeah, problem, man. Sam is saying, hi, gents. I am from... Tell, tell show. Shout out Terry. Tell show. Thoughts on the two Mo's game. Two Mo's. Two Mo's games? What do you mean two Mo's games? What bro? do you mean, Sam? What does that mean? Two Mo's games? I, I don't know. Tomorrow's oh, game. You mean tomorrow's, tomorrow's game? Yeah, we'll talk yeah, about tomorrow. tomorrow in a bit. Like, we'll talk about yeah. tomorrow. Just, uh, you know, we, I've done a lot of shows about tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Um. One thing I'd give you a, a secret, Mo. I have a bad feeling about Liverpool tomorrow. I don't know why. I hope I'm wrong. But usually when I get this bad feeling, you know, something bad ends up happening. But I just have a bad feeling about... I'm going to dunk on your head if you drop points tomorrow. Bro, you I, know I why, just right? have a bad feeling about the game, man. You know, I'm having Diaz PTSD, Gakpo PTSD, and I've had enough, Allah. I have a real bad feeling. If I Alhamdulillah, if... we employ Mohamed Salah. Alhamdulillah. Without that yeah. guy, this front line would stink. Have a bad Listen. feeling. You really think that Brighton can get... You know, I was listening to another podcast, to The Guardian, and they were saying that they feel like this is a banana skin for Liverpool. They feel like... They, they have a feeling that this this game is suited before the Two big days game. Ago, I said we're going to smash Brighton. I said it. And I said we're going to smash the Zerbi, and I call him a hipster, but I don't know why. It's just a bad feeling, man. <laughs> I hope I'm wrong. It's just a bad feeling, nothing else. Just a bad feeling, but I hope we smash them. You know, and we're it, of... tactically, this game is set up for Liverpool to win, not Brighton yes. to get a result. Yes, we're capable of it only if our front line just takes their chances. Yeah. That's it. It's, like just it's front line. really set up for Liverpool to win, like 4 1 or 4 2, or some, some kind of yeah. shit like this. You know what I mean? The more, the more, the take that I have is City are not beating Arsenal tomorrow. It's either yeah, Arsenal that, that... or Brighton. I actually believe City. You know, the more I think about it, I feel it's going to be a draw, like what you said. But I, I, I predicted City to win 2-1. Because they're, because at, they're home. at home. Uh, who do I want to win tomorrow from Arsenal and Man City? I actually want Arsenal to win. I want Arsenal to win as well. Do you know why I want Arsenal to win? I want to see City four points behind two teams. I've never seen it. Challenging for the league title. I want to see how the City fans react. I want to see how Pep Guardiola is going to come across now 
as a smug in the press conferences if he loses to Arsenal. <laughs> We know Listen, I, I, I fully believe Arsenal are going to get something at the Etihad tomorrow. I don't think they they lose. They either get a draw or they win. And if they get a draw, they got four points off City, which is good. And if uh, and if they win, then they got six points off City, which is yeah, hundred yeah, so percent. I want I want City. I want I want Arsenal to win just for the fun of it. To have Arsenal uh, Arsenal and Liverpool like I want Arsenal to win for a different reason, more. Because you think Arsenal aren't winning the league, and if they win, they are the only challengers for you, and you, no, you fear City win, more I than Arsenal. Arsenal have a Does that mean you fear City more than Arsenal? Of course, I fear City more than Arsenal. Hundred percent. Are you mad? Hundred percent. I fear City more than Arsenal. But the reality the dis- is, the disrespect on Arsenal is real. Man. No, 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 no. There's no disrespect on Arsenal. When you look at the running, City have the most pathetic, easy running out of the three teams. Eight of the games they can win with their bench. They can win eight of the games with their bench. Arsenal and Spurs are the only tough games. That's it. Me tomorrow, inshallah, I'm going to be singing Arsenal songs. And it's awesome. We'll be there, inshallah. You know, I'll be singing Arsenal songs. I need Arsenal to win. I'm playing 4D chess. We'll see how it is. Anyway, people, I got to go now. Do iftar because I'm fasting. I want to appreciate everybody that watched us. All the super chatters, of course. Uh, that super chatted starting from Ryan, Skip to the Lou, Irox, Nilotpal, Andrew Wright. Smoke, uh, Pratic, uh, Jerome, of course, and uh, Al Guapo, Al Guapo, Al Guapo, Tevin, of course, LSG, uh, and uh, who else? JW, Herman, RSV, Brazy, and Sam Lowe. It's Lowe. Way. Thank you, everybody that watched us. I hope that you guys enjoyed this stream. Let's get to four. We're only 30 likes away from 400 mm-hmm. likes. This was a fantastic stream. I enjoyed this so much. Absolutely brilliant, guys. And we'll see you guys tomorrow on the watch along on This Is Football, of course. Make sure to watch this football and if we to judge more. You can have both on whatever you are watching the game on, right? Uh, and also I have a reaction. 7.30 UK time. I'm doing a reaction before the big day of Al Ahwa, of course, tomorrow on This Is Football. Appreciate everyone at 10 p.m. UK time with Hamza, Staffy, and Hussam and everyone there on the Al Ahwa crew, Saad, Ziad, Jacob, of course. Appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for everybody supporting the channel and we'll see you guys soon and we're out, people.